I'm back at the Bespoke Bike Show in Harrogate to show you more of the latest and greatest custom painted bikes and all the cool stuff that's here. So let's go see what we can find. Tom Sturdy is here, and you may remember that we visited him in his shed uh, over a year ago, where he showed us his fantastic 3D printed titanium creations. Well, he's back and he's got some more innovations, some new things that he's been working on, and they're presented on this bike. So the first thing is this fork, which is 3D printed titanium, and it's the first 3D printed titanium fork that I've seen and that I'm aware of. And then this is paired with this beautiful 3D printed titanium integrated aero bar and stem. And just the kind of finish and the design and how flush it is throughout the bike, it's just really nice. The standout thing for me is how narrow and slender the head tube is. And that's despite there being fully integrated cables being routed through it. Often on, well, metal bikes, as you see that in order to accommodate integrated cables, they have to have quite big head tubes, quite fat ones, and then the cables are routed through that. But here it's very slender, and 3D printing is allowed for that because it means that you can very precisely and accurately design the internal structure of both the head tube and the fork to make that easier. So the cable comes through the top of the stem here, which is slightly higher to allow for the bend of the cable, the hydraulic line, and then it goes through the top bearing, then there's a slot in the fork uh, steerer here, which allows the rear brake cable to come out and then through the down tube. The other one just goes through the bottom bearing and then down into the fork blade. But inside the fork here, there's lots of sort of strengthening and ribbing built in because it's been built up 3D printed. So it's nice and strong, Tom tells me. And then the stays on this bike have now been 3D printed as well at the back. And then a nice functional detail is that every single bolt that you might need to adjust on this bike if you were out on a ride is a T25 Torx, which means that's in theory the only tool that you'd need to take with you. So the through axles have T25 on, the, uh, the seat post and then all the bolts at the back as well and the bottle cages. And well, all the bolts have actually been made by Tom uh, to his own specification himself using a very sort of high tensile uh, titanium so that they're not gonna round out easily and they're very high quality. Very cool, isn't it? The Bespoke Show isn't just about showcasing custom bikes, it's also about showcasing methods you can customize your own bikes. I'm over at the Spray Dot Bike booth, and many of you will be familiar with Spray Dot Bike. They make a range of custom spray paint so that you can use and customize your own frame and do your own custom painting at home. And lots of you upload Spray Dot Bike bikes to uh, the screw riding upgrades by upgrades in the GCN app, and we tend to feature them quite regularly. They've got 18 new colours out, and they've got this really cool, just very quickly done, custom painted frame on the stand. And I was speaking to them, and they told me that the way they've done it is quite, well, they made it sound simple, I'm sure it's a bit harder if you try it yourself, but just going across in lines, in different colours, and then they've got this really nice splatter effect, which has been achieved by spraying the paint into the cap, and then having the cap, and then just going like that and just see it creating the splatter and it's all rough and ready and nice but it just it just looks really cool and just it's loads of fun to do they've actually got 18 different new colors available and four metallic colors so here there's a sort of stenciled logo on there in metallic gold that's just been put on um, which is cool because there's not many custom sort of paint options available out there that offer metallic uh, silver and gold so nice i look forward to seeing your uh, your efforts in the future in the upload section of the app one of the things I love about the Bespoke Bike Show is it's a firm reminder that bikes don't just have to be super aero and super lightweight. They can be fun and functional too. And this Deer Susan is the perfect example of that. It's a fixie bike designed for just cruising around the, uh, well, the builder's local seaside town, uh, but it's also very adaptable. So it's got bosses on here. It can be turned into a geared bike. The rear dropout can be changed. It can be fitted with a belt drive or gears and there's mounts to put brakes on if you want to put brakes on it. But also it's got a Lau fork on the front as well to give it lots of compliance. The geometry is such that it's not a racer, it is designed for just cruising around sort of, well, urban environments, but it can also go off road because it's got nice gravel tires on there as well. And just nice, wide, comfortable bars and comfortable geometry. But then there's loads of cool aesthetic features in there as well that 
are just there for fun. So you've got this beautiful gold leaf on the head tube, this weird sort of three beam design to the central triangle, which is mainly there for aesthetics. You've got this nice fillet brazing, and then this kind of slime paint effect down, down the rear seat tube, which it's just there just because it's fun, isn't it? And then, you know, further back, there's also other little details written on the frame, including this one on the top tube, which has Rust Never Sleeps with a picture of the Grim Reaper. And that's there because these top tubes here have been left untreated, they're just steel. So over time, they will get some rust on them. And um, well, the frame builder, who this is his own personal bike, he's totally fine with that. He thinks it's cool, he thinks it's like an aging thing. And uh, he's just sort of joking at people who go, why haven't you treated it? Well, he has, he's put a, a, a bit of paint on there to acknowledge that it will go rusty. I just like it, I like this sort of snooker cue effect here with the triangles coming out on the down tube. Proper nice. This is a, a custom frame made by Brevet Cycles, who is a small French uh, frame manufacturer. And I want to show it to you because it's pretty interesting. So it's a truss design. So you can see you've got these split tubes here rather than a single top tube. Same on the fork, you've got a truss fork with two different uh, tube sections coming up here. It's actually very strong. It looks sort of elegant and it's nice aesthetically, but it's actually, yeah, a very strong design, deceptively strong to look at. But the main reason to use it is sort of for, for aesthetics, it creates a nice look. The reason why I want to show you this bike is actually because there's an interesting design idea with regards to the geometry. So at the moment, there's a massive trend for loading up bikes and sticking luggage on them and bike bags, but this can compromise the handling. It can mean that the front end, especially when you're riding off-road or on gravel, can feel quite twitchy when it's got a lot of weight on it. So Brevet Cycles has tweaked the geometry on this bike, giving it a much uh, steeper head angle. And the idea being that this is a bike that's actually designed to be ridden, loaded with weight on the front end and carrying luggage, and it, it doesn't compromise the handling. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see if major brands start designing bikes in this way, considering that bike packing is just exploding everywhere. I mean, it was bound to happen, wasn't it? This is a tandem, but it's a gravel tandem. First time I've ever seen one of these, but I don't think it's gonna be the last. It's made by Landscape Cycles. They're a custom frame builder who've been custom making frames since 1979. Sort of full aluminium construction, including the fork. And then it's got massive 200 mil rotors front and rear to give it that extra stopping power because it's a much you know, bigger bike with greater inertia once it gets going. And then you've got a well, sort of two by one by setup with a SRAM 10 by 50 Eagle cassette on the back to make sure you've got plenty of gears when you're off-road. And, uh, oh, two gold chains. Oh, uh, there's no one here, so I guess I have to sort of double fist pump myself. Anyhow, if you, uh, if you think that this should be the bike that uh, Hank does his next tandem challenge on, well, you know what to do. Comment below. This beautiful bike has been designed and built by Ricky Feather of Feather Cycles based in York, Yorkshire. And the first thing that stands out about it is the stunning candy red metallic paint job. And at the back it's kind of a uniform paint and then it flows beautifully into this kind of flowing sort of organic pattern at the front with loads of intricate swirls in it. And that's all been sort of done by hand, hand finished with a brush. And it's, uh, it's just really beautiful around the head tube and the fork. And then the other thing is just the fact that it's covered in all the, the latest and greatest bits. So it's full Jura H with ceramic speed, Chris King headset, you know, Deda bars, and it's just very nice. But the standout feature of this bike isn't immediately obvious. It's actually around these lugs here. So these are stainless steel lugs on the top tube and the down tube. And this enables the bike to fold. Why do you want a folding bike? It makes it easier to travel. This bike actually fits inside this suitcase when it's folded in half. Then you take the seat post out and take the bars and turn those around. And that means that you can travel with your bike on a plane without the need for a big bike box. It means you don't need to pay for excess luggage or special baggage and just makes life much easier. Ricky also tells me that having these lugs on here actually strengthens these areas rather than makes them weaker, meaning that the bike is just like a normal bike to ride. They add a tiny bit of extra weight, but not much. They're made of stainless steel. And I love how they just make 
a really nice aesthetic feature of these lugs. The contrast of the stainless steel versus this candy red. Oh, it's just absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Oh, big fan. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this look at some of the beautiful custom bikes and tech here at the Bespoke Bike Show. If you have, please give this video a thumbs up and let us know in the comments what your favourite thing has been. I'm, uh, I'm going to go home now. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. What's in the box, are they? Nothing. <laughs>